So far, our, our analysis of closed loop systems has really dealt with uh, transfer function methods. And so now this class is going to take a look at um, what happens in state space. And so there's some elegant math that happens here. And so we're going to um, cover a little bit of the introduction of that in this video, and then we'll dive deeper in the class. So remember, our state space equations are given up here x dot equals ax plus bu and our observation y what we actually see is c times our state x and so in general even for the case where where we're dealing with m is equal to one um, uh, the fact that we only have one input that the state x can still be a vector and so in that case that means that um, we're going to be designing an input u um, out of out of some quantity and so the first thing that we're going to consider is dealing with um, the state x um, now what we're going to what we're going to observe is that oftentimes we cannot see um, all of the state of x so for example we have a sensor that may measure the displacement but not the velocity of of an element of our system and so in that case um, it's going to be interesting to understand what we can do without full state feedback but first, let's talk about full state feedback, and then we'll see what we do in order to account for um, the fact that we may not know x, and the only thing that we can actually use is, is y. But in the case of full state feedback, um, one thing that we can do in order to stabilize x, so in our goal here is to just stabilize x, we will talk about reference tracking uh, in class, um, is to design a feedback controller such that the input is some matrix k multiplied by our state x and so what we're going to see is is this is actually very similar to some of the controllers we've already talked about in class uh, for transfer functions so if we do consider this state feedback u is equal to kx we can just plug in for u we can just plug in kx and so the elegant thing here is that now if we combine terms we have a matrix this is a new matrix a plus bk multiplied by x and that's given by uh, x dot and so this should ring a, this should look very similar to when we studied homogeneous systems for state space and we just looked at this equation the only difference here is now a is now given by a plus bk and so there is no more input in the state equation once we provide this feedback term based on the state and so this means that all of the closed loop dynamics and the behavior is governed by a plus bk just like in the homogeneous case all of the behavior is governed by the matrix a and so stability is going to be guaranteed by if but depending on the eigenvalues of the matrix a plus bk in particular that the real part of the eigenvalues of a plus bk must be negative for it to be stable and so what our goal is is that we get to choose the values of k and we're going to learn how to choose k such that we make this stable and that will actually be something that we'll wait and hold off on for a couple of weeks but that right now it's important to analyze a feedback control system and know that the stability is determined by this matrix a plus bk to see an example of this um, we will go back to our uh, spring mass damper and so again we have our state space equations that we derived in past uh, classes and if we design a controller that's u is equal to k times x then our k is a matrix and our x is a state and so if you remember the way that we defined our states in this case was that the first state is just the the displacement y and the second state is the velocity y dot and so if we multiply these two uh, matrices out then we just get kp times y plus kd times y dot and so this should look very similar which is because of the way that our states are defined that this is exactly the same thing as pd controller as a pd controller and what this is going to do is it's going to stabilize y again this is not tracking and tracking is something that we'll cover in class